Do you have the gift of gab and like talking about interesting topics? Are you often called opinionated by your friends and family? Then come to Anchor where you can be all of the above and get paid for it. Along with being one of the easiest systems to create contact with, Anchor supplies everything you need and can be used from your smart smartphone or computer. They even distribute your content for you so that you can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and more. Just download the A- Anchor app or go to Anchor FM to get started. Okay, um, the name of this post, I'm going to name it, Yes, Beggars Can Be Choosy. Now, it's a post, that, and the subtitle is How to Date When Your Circumstance, How to Re Enter the Dating World When Your Circumstances Aren't Perfect. Now, this is a subject that has kind of been on my mind and heart, thank you, Holy Ghost, for quite some time now because um, I added another group to my following on Facebook, and the group has to do with um, black singles only. And I'm guessing that part of it, the reason was the other groups that had to do with relationships that wanted to be inclusive of marrieds kept running into the problem of married people who kept acting like they were single, joining the group and trying to cheat on their spouses with people within that group. And it's hard. It's basically like life. When you are trying to meet D1, you run into a lot of counterfeits. And so it's not always easy to weed out the counterfeits. And one of the counterfeits can be married people who pose as though they're single or married people who act like they're in a troubled marriage and really they're not. They're in an intact marriage and they are just trying to get some spare um, trim, trying to have somebody on the side. So anyway, back to the subject. The idea for this post came because I was seeing a lot of posts And there seemed to be a reoccurring theme there. And it was um, how to avoid baby mama drama, you know, baby daddy drama, um, people not having their finances together, brothers, you know, brothers and sisters just being um, recently reentering the world after being incarcerated. And a lot of questions about dating people who basically their circumstances are just less than what you really want to have. Or maybe the person has bad credit, maybe they're jobless, maybe they're homeless. You know, so if you fall into any of these categories, if you're jobless, you're homeless, you got mismatched baby mamas and daddies, um, I always like to fancy myself to be part of the solution instead of part of the problem. And part of the problem is, um, you know, people tend to judge people harsher when their circumstances are less than ideal. It's easy to look down your nose at the person who has these circumstances and go, oh my God, no, because you see a mess. So first of all, let me go over some of the reasons why people you know, who fall into these categories. If you fall into one of these categories, you may have made a sincere, um, you have made, maybe you have a, you have made a sincere effort to try to get it together. And you're finding that you have a hard time meeting anyone because people tend to judge your past. And, you know, um, the three categories that I have, I'm, I'm going to, I wrote down three, but I'm going to add to one is single parenthood. Like I said, the person who's not just a single parent, but you're a single parent and your children have mismatched baby daddies or you're a man and your children have mismatched baby mamas. Okay. Now I fall into that category. I have two children that I've raised as a single mom and they have two fathers. My oldest is 29 and my youngest is 22. Now, a lot of reasons for that. The relationship with my son's father didn't work out. We broke up, I was alone for a time, and then I met my, my daughter's father and that relationship didn't work out either. So here I was raising them alone and when I had her, I just decided you know, to live right, to do, to be, to walk with God and just not have anybody. 
and you know if I meet somebody you know I it was it it's not like I sat there and said well I'm not gonna date again until my children are grown some other stuff got in there because of the church I was in and because I had a lecherous pastor <laughs> but the bottom line is I tell people all the time I really don't have no regrets I had someone try to make me feel shame me because well if you didn't have them kids you know blah 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 what well, I, I would have more opportunities to meet some of these more more even hot mess men than I have met already I mean you know what I'm saying I don't really think that really that affected anything you know if it affected anything I wouldn't have had my daughter um I dated I dated when my son was small people men asked me out men asked me out when my daughter was small as well and nobody really even knew that they didn't have the same father until I told them and you know just told them because I I believe in providing all things honest. I'm not going to lie. I'm proud of my children. You know, I'm, I have no shame when it comes to my babies and I don't let anybody shame them and make me feel bad for having them. Nowadays, that kind of comes with the territory if you're dating. Some people have different ch- different fathers for their kids and different, you know, whatever because they've been married a number of times. So, like I said, you know, this is one of those categories that, you know, you feel like, well, shoot, everybody is so judgmental toward that group. Am I going to ever find anybody? Yeah, you can find love. Don't give up. I'm not giving up. I'm not worried about it. You know, and many times people shame people because, you know, the whole thing of misery, love, and company, like my grandmother used to say. And some people just, they don't feel good about their circumstance, so if they can make you feel bad, so they can feel better about themselves, that's what they do. Okay, the second second category is financial issues. You have, you messed up your credit. Well, guess what? I kind of fall into that group too. My credit rating isn't where it, where it should be or whatever. And so you're learning how to you know, do redo your budget so that you can um, get it together so that when you meet somebody and you're pairing your money with theirs, you're not hurting each other financially. You're not a hindrance to each other. So maybe, or maybe you do have a budget, but you just need to, you know, you just need to, you know, just need to, or you know it, but you just need to look, utilize it. So you're basically in a stage of getting it together. So these are the the prog- these are what I call work in progress. Maybe you have legal issues. Like I said mentioned earlier, you did time, you know, or maybe you have a pat maybe you have a, maybe you were incarcerated and now you're trying to get your sea legs back being out here and re-entering the non-prison world, trying to find work trying to take care of your physiological need for shelter, food, medical care, and different other things. And you're trying to, um, I recently interviewed for a job with a re-entry service here in town, and they mainly work with not with um, low-risk offenders, which means mostly people on paper or on parole. And I'm kind of looking for, hopefully I'm going to hear back from them because it sounds like someplace to really get my teeth into um, the whole world of mental health and, and counseling. So maybe you have legal issues and, you know, you're trying to, you're on, or maybe you're on paper, maybe you're in a halfway house, you know, whatever the case is. Um, another issue that I just, um, you know, I'm trying to think of what the other issues issue was because it was on my mind, on the tip of my tongue, and then I lost it. Or maybe you're homeless. That's another. Um, you live in a shelter and you have those things going on. And you're trying to, first of all, let me say this much. I personally am of the opinion that if you lack shelter and you don't have a place to live and you're trying to get it together in that way, you need to kind of put dating, unless you meet somebody that just so knocks you off your, you know, feet, <laughs> that you, maybe they're your incentive to get it together because you want somebody like them. But to be perfectly honest with you, 
I'm of the mind, first of all, make sure to take care of your physiological needs. You may not be driving a car, but at least have a place to live. Because one of the things I have seen as a person who has lived in low income or not so good areas is the prevalence of a lot of people who are doing a lot of what I call survival sex. And survival sex is cupping, you know, survival sex is sleeping with somebody for a place to live. And I have seen it a lot in the black community, mainly men, but there have been women doing it too. You know, and like this one woman was saying, you know, I've seen this one meme where they're saying many many people are not looking for love. They're looking for help. And one of the ways you know this is because they don't have a place to live. Well, to me, if you're that bad off to where you don't have a place to live, you should cool it on dating and be concentrating on getting that portion together. Um, if you don't have a job, well, it depends on how long it's been between your, between jobs for you. If you're, you know, financially unstable and financially unstable can mean any, can mean any number of things. But basically, if you know, if you bear, if if you're looking at disconnect notices all the time, then you might want to concentrate on catching all of that up and getting your budget together so that when you do go out and do things, you're not constantly worrying about, oh my God, you know, hopefully that credit, hopefully that debit purchase will go through or what have you. One trick that I've heard, and I have told people all the time, um, one question is, well, who should pay for the date? Well, let me say this much. If you cannot afford, and I'm going to say this, especially to men, if you cannot afford to take someone out, then you need to be worrying about getting yourself together financially. Um, Don't be taking people out and forgetting your wallet at home. You know, one piece of advice I give people, and this is for both men and women, I'm of the mind that, I am of the mind that whoever does the asking should be prepared to pay for the date. And... Many men won't let you pay. I have been, believe it or not, there are men, and I've dated some of those guys who just will not hear of a woman paying for a date. So that's why I always leave the window open for whoever they should be prepared to. A woman should be prepared to, you know, even if, she, even if you know, the guy says, I don't let women pay for me, because some won't, leave, won't even let you pay even if you're the one who does asking. So, yes, those guys do exist in the world. However, you should still be prepared to go ahead and pay for the whole thing, even if it's you asking. Just for GP, I also believe in each side having some mad money. Because as much as we want to, much as we like to get along, much as we can be attracted one to another, shit happens. Okay? You can fall out. The date can go left. Even a first date can go left. So you should be prepared. You should at least have enough that you can either have cab fare or bus fare to get home. You know what I'm saying? Or have your phone good and charged up just in case you need to call a cab to come and get you or call one of your or have one of your people on standby just in case you have to call them to come and get you, depending on who's driving to go on this date. And so, um, you know, those are the things that I'm seeing. And like I said, if you're real bad off to the point where you're need a, needing a place to live, you don't need to be dating. If I don't have a place to live, I'm not going out with nobody. You know what I'm saying? Because I really don't believe in dating when you don't have a pot to pee in or a window to throw it out of. If you are in that sad of shape, then you don't need to date. You need to set by, you need to worry about getting your situation straight. Then you date. I'm not now my word, like I said, what I'm saying when you read my blogs, I am logos. I am the general word. But the people that you are running into in your lives on a regular basis, they are Rhema, the specific word for that situation. So if you've got people who 
don't have a problem with you being in adverse circumstances and are willing to date you and get to know you anyway, that's cool. You're more than blessed and you are meeting some very rare, special people and consider yourself blessed. But then there are the rest of us. And that's not so much that people want you to have your act together. That There's the real fear of being the one left holding the bag if you don't do right. So this particular post is for those who want to do right. Okay. Um, let me go over some reasons why these are circumstances that may make it hard for you to date or marry. Um, the first thing about, you know, many people who, number one, the number one reason why people will have problems with dating people who fall into these categories is they may have come out of that situation themselves and they don't want to have nobody dragging them back in. If you've cleaned up your credit, I remember reading this story one time where this lady, and it was a black woman, said she wanted a man with a seven 125 credit score now I always find it funny when women have a standard and everybody wants to argue with them and the brothers oh that's why she's standing there by herself and different other stuff but if a man says that's what he wants nobody questions it so yeah I do sense a double standard on that anyway she said it well I could understand it because I've always told people in my family I almost feel like the Jar Jar Binks in the family when it comes to my credit because even though I know how to get things done even without A1 credit I still would I still have conviction about liking wanting to get my score up a little bit more and improve my financial situation without resorting to a whole bunch of crazy act- activity to do it so um She was saying how this is what she wanted. Well, I kind of understood it and I told somebody, you know, all these other people were shaming her and everything. And so I finally said, well, let me say this much. It, it, you know, it is nothing but a notion and credit is one of those things in this country that really is not that racially diverse. It's very hard for us to get credit and get lending. It has been easier in recent years. So when you do get it, you really kind of have to cherish it and make sure you pay everything on time so that you can keep it, keep your scores together. Um, like I said, many times people have had have had credit issues and they finally getting it back on track and they don't want nobody coming along that's gone, that they feel like is going to threaten it. And, and and I can understand that. I don't have I don't shame them. I don't have no issues with them. Like I said, it wasn't my standard, but I ain't have any problem. I didn't judge her for having the standard because my mom has always had a one credit, and so because my mother has a one credit, she's always been able. Things just go better with you on that. So I never um judged her. Okay, another example would be babies mismatched baby mamas and daddies. Now, the reason why people frown on dating people who have kids from prior relationships, especially if there's more than one parent involved, is because they fear drama from the other parent. I'm just going to keep it real. And I have a story from my own personal experience. I, as far as men dating me, none of them had the one nice thing. about The one thing about having fathers who were not involved was they also didn't have the ability to interfere in my dating life. Nobody showed up and showed out. Anyway, I remember going out with this guy. And on the first date, um baby mama drama now he had sat over here and gave me his little sob story she cheated on cheated on him with somebody else or had left him for one of his friends and all this other stuff and so you know he seemed like a decent enough fellow and so I went ahead and decided to go on a date with him well I, during the course of the evening we were in my car and I went ahead you know and, and let him be the one driving since I was in the car we had my son with with us um he said, I need to stop by and drop, I need to stop by where my ex is because I need to drop something off for her. And so me being the child of a divorce and understanding 
you know, sometimes that happens. I went ahead and was nice being misaccommodating and said, okay, well, you know, not a problem. I know what it's like to be co- to co-parent. I don't ever want to discourage a man from doing, from taking care of his kids. So I was cool with it. I went ahead, I rolled with it. Well, we get there and he goes in the house and I'm thinking, well, maybe he dropping her off some money or whatever, who knows? So they get in there and I'm sitting in the car. The next thing I know, they come, he comes walking out and they're having this great big argument in the middle of the street. And she's saying, go on head, go on head. And he, this, that, and the other, and they back and forth. So I sat there and kept my cool. Cause I'm like, I don't know this guy. I don't know what they're arguing about. Anyway. Later on, when I later on when I was you know praying about Lord, what in the world? The Holy Spirit brought me back to this incident, and He said that should have been the last time you dated him. Okay, I and what can I do? But how can I argue with that? Because I'm gonna tell you what happened when this that night there kind of set the tone for the way the relationship went from then on. Because from then on, it was constant drama, and it was always constant drama surrounding baby's mama. Whether it was baby's mama deciding she needed to move back in because she all of a sudden fell out with one of her cousins, with the cousin she was living with, and needed a place to stay. And so then from then on, we had to deal with the whole two-timing aspect and this, that, and the other. So finally, I wound up having to cut him loose. And I had to cut him loose a couple of times in order for it to stick. Another um, baby's mama issue came with an ex of mine who fathered children with different women. And he had one of them that was a little crazy. And she, every time he would get a new girlfriend or date somebody new, she would, she would show up at their place and decide to fight him. She even got one of them down on the ground and I think cut her, cut her hair off. So those are examples of why a lot of people frown on dating people and expect, and if the person isn't handling their business, then you talking about more than one person to have drama out of. So, like I said, one of the pe- reason, and of course, with the recent incarceration thing and, you know, homeless, it's about the person's survival and, you know, not knowing if they're really into you or if they're just wanting a place to stay. So those are some of the reasons why people have reservations about dating people who have these um, problems. Now, um, I'm going to go a little further and tell you how to overcome that. Because you can overcome it. You can meet people. You can date even under adverse circumstances. Um... And, you know, get yourself together enough to find love. The number one thing is recognize that you're a work in progress. Okay? You are a work in progress. You are somebody who, you you know, you're not only a work in progress, but the Bible calls you, if you belong to Christ, an overcomer based on the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. One thing I've been saying here lately, and I stand by what I'm saying, is you have a right to change for the better whenever you get good and ready. People misunderstand born-again Christians and born-again Christianity, and you know, you hear, oh, you're judgmental or you're judging people. No, you have a right to leave your past behind you no matter what. You have a right to walk forward, and you have a right to walk forward unhindered. Now, of course, there'll be hindrances because anytime you decide to get saved and decide you don't want to live with your old life no more. Maybe you don't. Maybe you had drug issues and now you're, you know, get putting your life back together after that. Well, one of the things that happens is people start showing up and part of the warfare is your old associates. Maybe you used, you used the club. I used the club. 
And one of the problems, I remember one of my old associates, you know, trying to drag you back into the club or trying to pe- drag you back into the drug den or trying to drag you back into this onto the stripper pole or trying to drag you back into the brothel or trying to drag you back into being a pimp or whatever, whatever, you know, pedophilia, whatever. OK, whatever it is, somebody trying to drag you back to your old way of life or maybe you just had really really bad dysfunctional drama ridden relationships and so you made up your mind to start choosing from a better pool of people and you have folk trying to drag you back into um, the drama that comes with that but you know women driving strange women driving past your house because of whoever you're dating um different women showing up where different people of the opposite gender showing up wherever you are to try to keep you fussing and fighting over somebody whatever the issue is somebody trying to drag you back to who you used to be instead of you know hindering you and so just remember and even if you had to say it to yourself you have a right to go forward and and change your life for the better Never let anybody make you think that you are married to your past. The word of God says that if you are in Christ, you are a new creature. All all, old things have passed away and all, 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 A-L-L, all things are now new. So you don't have to be married to every mistake you make. And no, none of your past stuff has a right to attach itself to you and come along, along for the ride. No, you have a right to put that back there and let it stay where it is and move forward. And you have a right to do it unhindered. Now, a, another thing you want to do when you are doing, be honest with yourself about where you are and where you need to come up. Is it an issue of, okay, I need a place to live? Because it can be that deep. Is it that you need to get your, maybe you need to get, maybe you need employment. Maybe you need to, you know, clean up. Maybe you need to clean up your attitude. Maybe your attitude toward the opposite gender sucks. And maybe you need to deal with that. Maybe you have anger issues. Maybe you have resentment. Maybe you have resentment toward the opposite sex because of the home that you were raised in. Wherever it is that you, that whatever, whatever area it, it is in your life, or maybe you know you have a career path or ministry path that you want, and you need to get in that lane and stay in that lane and learn how to focus besides the warfare that wants to drag you back. Either way it is, you need to get honest with yourself about the area in your life that you want to work on so that you can become um, a better person, you know, so that you can, and like I said, you can find love on your way there. You don't have to have gotten it together in order for you to meet somebody. Maybe you need to, maybe you'll meet them on your way. Anyway... Another thing to do is always present your best self without dishonesty. No one's asking you to be fake. One thing with my children when they were small, um, I always kept a, I've always kept a pretty clean apartment. I always, you know, they went to school every day. I kept them clean. They were not neglected. They were fed on a regular basis. And I didn't have men running and out my house. Now, I'm not trying to curb nobody else's sexual behavior. I'm not trying to curb your sexual freedom. But one thing you have to recognize is that you that when you have kids, it's not about you anymore. You have to be careful who you have in your household. You have to be careful who, and I don't, and I'm going to say this, you know, having left the church before this very thing, do not let people make you think that you're nothing without a man or nothing without a woman. Be careful who you have around you. Um, I read a meeting this morning, and it was really interesting to me and it prompted me I'm like yeah it's time for me to write to record this message and post it 
because some of these fools have really tried, like truly lost their mind. So the meme goes like this. You have women in here talking about the group that I'm in with multiple children by multiple men and never been married. Because all of those are an indictment of your character, right? Actually judging men in here with no children who have never been married. Now, the one thing that caught my eye was both groups of people have never been married. So if he hasn't had any children and he's a catch, why is he not married? I can see her not being married because, you know, it may take a while for you to meet somebody who wants to, who isn't going to shy away from raising someone else's children. If you, let's face it, I'm a woman out here. And even though I don't believe in having standards that I'm not meeting, um, right now I'm grown and right, I mean, right now I'm grown right now. I have grown children. And to be perfectly honest with you, one of my standards right now is I would, I, I would prefer to have a man who has grown kids. That's kids or adults. Why? Because right now at this time in my life, I don't, you know, I don't have to hire a babysitter. I can come and go like I want to. I can travel. The only person to live with me is my youngest and she's 22. She's responsible. She has the ability to, you know, I can come home and ain't nobody threw a wild party because she didn't got all of that out of her system. You know, my house isn't going to be burnt down. My stuff isn't going to be sat out or no stuff like that so I'm not having those issues and I kind of prefer at this time in my life a man who is able to do the same you know now am I married to that standard I met a wonderful man and he had maybe one or two kids that were still you know I'd say underage it wouldn't kill me you know, we just we just have to work with it. If he's still at the co-parenting stage where they're not, where they're minors, you know, you you just have to work. You just have to work with it. You can't, you know. I'm not gonna sit over here and say, well, you know, if I meet somebody wonderful that's good to me, I'm not gonna sit over here and say, well, you know. But and it would all also depend on how young the child. I really don't want to start all over with anybody real small. But I'm not going to sit over here and rule it out completely either. But my preference is that his kids already be grown. Because my kids are already grown. So, like I said, but also your appearance. Um, For women and men, you know, keep your appearance clean. Be clean and smelling good. Even if you're on your way to the gym... Be, you know, clean and smelling good. If you just got done working out, try to make sure you get home and hit the shower before you go anywhere else where you're going to be around people um, and stuff like that. But it, anyway, like I said, you know, put forward your best self, you know, be clean, be smelling good. Keep your place clean. Um, keep your car clean. Um, try to be working or at least be industrious enough that you're looking for work. If you're on any type of public assistance, keep that together. You know, don't, you don't have to walk around. My, my, um, one of my friends, mother used to say when she was alive, you know, put your best face forward. Don't, you ain't got to walk around looking like, just cause you ain't got a lot of money. Don't mean you got to walk around looking like a welfare queen. You know, that was her expression for telling us, you know, as young women, she was like, you don't know, you may meet your husband, you never know. So she, you know, always instilled in us to look our best, at least, you know, be clean and, you know, be on top of your hygiene. Anyway, um, this, this next one is for any hits that you have taken to your self, your self esteem. Don't let anyone regard you as damaged goods. Now, I'm saying this because when I read that meme, and there's been a reoccurring theme coming out of some of the men that I've run into here lately, and it's a very toxic attitude. And it's the attitude that certain women don't have a right to have standards. In fact, 
certain women not only don't have a right to have standards, they also don't have a right to hold us to hold us responsible. They don't have a right to whatever. They're lucky we let them breathe the same air we did. Now, I used to joke like that about married men because as far as I'm concerned, you know, I used to joke and say married men are lucky I let them breathe the same air I do just simply because I don't date them. You know, I've seen that scenario on too many other people's lives. I've seen the heartbreak that comes on both ends, whether it was somebody that I knew that was dating someone married or someone that I knew who was being cheated on by their husband. And I've been in committed relationships and been cheated on, so I know what that is like. However, like I have said to people, I don't care if you look like Quasimodo. And let's face it, that's usually a standard that's put on women anyway. You know, the whole damaged goods. Nobody calls men damaged goods. And it's usually, you know, damaged goods can mean anything from she was molested or raped till she just had more partners, more sexual partners or body count is, is higher than they would be comfortable with. Never mind, many of these men, many of these men who say this stuff or many of these people who say this stuff Probably, probably if you were to go into their body count, who knows how high it is. Okay. And unfortunately, many people seem to be confused even on that. Okay. Have a low body count, but don't be saving sex for marriage like I am. So, but anyway, the whole, don't let anyone get inside your head and make you feel as though you're damaged goods. And when I read that meme this morning, all I could think was, well, first of all, do you really want somebody who thinks that way in your life over top of your children? And way too many women do that. They allow men into their lives to live on them, to not work and still be living with them and, or let them live with them and don't require them to be married to them. And, you know, put up with a whole lot of nonsense because of the way that they view themselves and because of the way they've been made to feel about themselves or their current situation like they're not good enough to want more than what they currently have. Or want more out of the men in their lives. And so they wind up putting up with a whole lot of dysfunctional behavior and you have to watch who you let judge you. If he under your roof and he ain't working and ain't doing right by you, the last thing he needs to do is be judging you. And the last thing you need to do is be hanging on to someone who re- who views you as damaged goods because if they're not talking to if they're talking to you like you ain't shit, guess what your kids are seeing? Your kids are seeing their mother being treated like shit. If you have a daughter that's teaching her that it's okay for men to treat her like shit. If you have a son, you're allowing someone to teach him how to treat women. So you really want to be careful who you let into your life and how they act. Um, I thought it was an interesting fact that I saw on Dr. Phil that mothers who cohabitate are more likely to have children that are molested or abused by the living boyfriend. And the research is out there. You can Google it yourself if you want to. But if they have a living boyfriend, he is more likely, those kids are more likely to be either overexposed to a whole lot of stuff because the person feels like it's not their kid. Now, you really don't want it if, they, if they're not And let's face it, if you're being abused right in front of them, it's like the kid is being abused psychologically because they're taking all that in. So you don't really um, want that. I will will tell you an example of a good thing in that area. I can remember seeing a clip one time and it had made the news, um, the show The Bachelor, which I don't watch on a regular basis. But they, but one year, what, but one season, they had a woman on there was that was a single mother, and one of the guys that she was interviewing to be her man, 
made the made you know made the dastardly mistake of referring to her children as baggage and she showed him the door rightfully so and I was like now that's what I'm talking about if they don't have a right attitude towards you or if they view you as damaged goods or they don't view you as being worthy of the best treatment that they could possibly give you then they don't need to be in your life and they definitely don't need to be around your kids and so I can remember, I, and, and to this um, particular entry, I responded and I said, well, first of all, no one should be judging anyone. However, people do have a right to evaluate who they're going to be spending their life with. And if you have children, I don't care how your kids got here. I don't care if you have three, four baby daddies, you know, whatever. You have, you now have little people. And when you have little little people you have to be choicy about who you decide to see and if you is since and i'm saying this to women since you are more likely to be the custodial parent you definitely want to be careful who you date while you have children because if they are you know I, like I you know left the church because of a situation where they wanted to put me together with someone and I didn't have peace about marrying that person and I didn't have peace about getting together with that person because number one you know I prayed about it and I just God didn't give me peace he just gave me a lack of peace about that person and so I learned you know if my gut is saying no to him then I'm saying no and so their response to me saying no to this person was to come to my job and lodge complaint after complaint after complaint about me and get me fired. Now, their tirades against me and their pastor's attitude was such that he was just going to make this marriage happen whether I wanted to be in it or not. Spiritual abuse. Now, I said to this day, even though things, you know, went kind of bad and, you know, I wound up suffering through a whole lot of adverse stuff as a result, I have no regrets about not marrying this man. Because like I said before, my, my, I don't care what you think about how many, ki- how many baby daddies I got. I don't care what you think about my body count. I don't care about none of that. But I raised my, but I, but my first concern is the safety of my children. I don't care what you think about fat black women. I don't care what you think about fat black women. I don't care about none of that. When it comes to my kid, that's right. If I don't get along with you, if you ain't under my roof and we don't get along, you don't get to move in here. I am 51 years old now and I have never had a live-in boyfriend. And I don't have no regrets about not having a live-in boyfriend. That's right, I don't shack. I don't give a care. I don't care what none of these three legs thinks about me not wanting to cohabitate outside of marriage because if they had any class at all, they wouldn't be trying to shack with you. They would marry you. So I really don't care what any man thinks about me not having sex. I don't care what any man thinks about me not shacking. I have never cared. Because I grew up in an atmosphere and was surrounded by people who got married. If you want to live under the same roof and, you know, I don't play house. And from what I've seen, the data that I've seen, you know, I'm gathering up some information of my own. And hopefully I'll be able to get the required amount, the what I require to really do my research because I want to state patterns that I've seen but unofficially most of the patterns I've seen of people who live together their marriages don't last any longer you know people sell you this bill of goods that shacking is supposed to help you um well you get to know the person better and blah 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 okay your relationships your marriages aren't lasting any longer than anybody who were married the whole time so I have yet to meet anybody who was able, able to successfully sell me on the whole whole issue of cohabitation. Um, another way to, you know, present your best you, because I'm trying to um, not get on too many soapboxes here, is, like I said, tighten up the areas that need to be tightened up. 
every year at Father's Day, I I put out a um, outreach type post that basically says to absent parents, now I do it on both Mother's and Father's Day, that to reconnect with their kids. Now, I'll tell you my reservations about dating men who don't take care of their children. I don't. If you got kids out here and you ain't been in touch with them and you're not financially responsible for them, if you are a deadbeat dad, if you are what we call a deadbeat dad, no, I don't want to date you. Ain't no sense in me even lying. One reason I'll tell you why is because I raised my two children alone without any help. And I just... You know, for a lot for for a long time, I had mixed feelings. One part of me is a little bit upset and resentful of the fact that these guys, you know, left their kids and just, you know, may as well act like the kid what didn't even exist. Very uncaring attitude. But the positive side, the part of me that sees the positive is, I haven't had to. Much as I support co-parenting, and I do, and if these guys had wanted to co-parent, I would have adjusted to let that let that happen because I'm convinced that the ideal situation is for kids to have access to both parents. At the same time, by them not being involved, I was able to raise them in church like I wanted to, even though that didn't turn out quite as good as I wanted to, and I, you know, ho- hopefully trusting God for a better situation with that, but. Um, I kind of got to raise them right, <laughs> you know, I got, I, I feel like I got to raise them in such a manner that they would be good people and not have to deal with all of the other crazy that comes with the other parent being involved. Um, so like I said, but if you're having co-parenting issues, kind of tighten that up. Because when you are when you are parenting with another person, if you're having baby's mama or baby's daddy drama, a lot of people kind of shy away from that. They don't really want to be bothered with it. And especially if they're already having <laughs> issues of their own, the last thing they want is your issues too. So anyway, but like I said before, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and end this because I've been going a little while with this. But just know that you don't have to, I guess my, my, the moral of my story at writing that, that, at posting this and recording it is to let you, to encourage you to not be discouraged at your present circumstances and think that they're, that, and think that they keep you locked out of being, being able to find someone to love you or find someone to love. There's a, you know, we have a say, we had a saying when I was younger that there is a pot, there is a lid for every pot. So I say this to, for you to be encouraged. Don't let other people discourage you. Um, one last story. I can remember being prayer partners with this lady at a church that I used to go to. And you have to be careful because Satan can use your mouth to speak very negative um, com- you know, confessions over stuff. And so one of the things that she was always telling her grown daughter is don't no man want no ready-made family. Don't no man want no ready-made family. And we don't, and we don't realize that as say mothers, we have to be careful how we talk to our daughters because we can lower their sense of self-worth and make them feel damaged even before a guy gets to them. You don't want to say that to him. And so she kept saying, don't know, man, want no ready-made family and blah, 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 blah. And so I finally said to her, um, think about what you just said and think about how that makes her feel because I'm a grown daughter of somebody. In fact, me and her daughter are about the same age. And can you see how you're kind of undermining her faith when you say that? If she's believing for a man and she already has three kids, then you want somebody who doesn't mind having a ready-made family. And when you're getting inside her ear and saying, don't no man want no ready-made family, don't no man want no ready-made family, you're basically undermining her faith. Not only that, you're kind of be, le- be you know, messing up your own testimony because you're currently married and the guy you married took in somebody else's kid, their kid with somebody else. 
So you're kind of undermining your own testimony instead of allowing her to have faith that she can meet somebody who will be okay with her having three children already. So you want to be careful. And like I said, you don't want to ever send them the message that they're, you know, you're making her feel like she's damaged goods. She's not damaged goods. She's redeemed. She's in Christ. So you want to be careful, you know, the message that you send and you definitely don't want to send it and then, and, and then be, be, you know, months later, well, why you got this deadbeat that don't work and, and why are you putting up with all this behavior? Because you keep telling her she's not going to get any better than what she's getting. So you want to think about that. Anyway, be encouraged. You know, this was a long one, but hopefully it'll help. And hopefully this will help who any, whoever's listening to it. So you guys have a good weekend. This is, you know, Friday. This was my Friday post. I said I was going to get back, you know, after posting my review for um, 90s Fest. So you guys have a blessed one. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you.